Hi, this is a short tutorial how to move files and folders, specifically folders, from the Windows 11 environment into the subsystem for Android. Okay, so what we need to do, we need to go to SDK to get something called ADB. Android Debug Bridge. It's for developers and it basically creates a bridge between your Windows operating system and the Android subsystem. So you need to go to SDK Tools for Windows, this site here, SDK Tools for Windows. I'll put the link in the description. And um, so there we are. SDK platform tools as the release notes obviously so we just need to scroll down here and that's what we need download SDK platform tools for Windows um, and it'll download um, the uh, Android debugging bridge yeah so we don't need to do that because I've already done that and it's it's in my downloads folder here as you can see so basically what I did, I extracted it. There. And because I, you can leave it called platform tools if you want, but I, I just find it's easier to work with if I just call it ADB. And I pull this folder, you can use it here if you want, anywhere. Uh, but I just like it nestled away on the root C. So I just dragged and dropped it there to move it there. But as you can see, it's already there. I've already done it. OK, so you can either create a folder and drop the files in there or you just drag that file to your, to your C. And those are the files inside it. OK, all right. So what we want to do next, we need to connect ADB to the system so that we can bridge. So we right click on our empty space, which is the easiest way. Um, we open terminal. Okay. And we'll find that we're already obviously in this, this directory. That's where we need to be. And we need to enter a command which is this period backward slash ADB connect and you're going to need this now this number is your IP address okay now it, you might not know what that is on, on your machine so the way to do it we have to go to Windows subsystem for Android otherwise it's not going to work so you have to go down to developer um, if you haven't already done so you need to toggle this on so it has to be in developer mode and if you just watch this area here you'll notice that the ADB can be connected and it can be connected to this address this is an address um, internet protocol address, IP address. So make a note of that and just jot it down. And that's all we need to do. Except while we're in here, we, we really need to make sure that the subsystem is fired up and ready to go, otherwise things would probably not work. So the way I do it, the quick way I do it, is just I go into System, Files, because we have no Android app. If you start an Android app, it will, if this isn't already started, then it will start this system. It doesn't start up immediately. It takes a while every time you do it. So I, so I use this to make sure it is started or just to start it up if you haven't got any Android apps. Obviously, it is started, so it's... Um, you know, these are the files in it. Uh, but if it's not started, that would take a while to start up. Now, also what I do, I go down to subsystem resources. I 
I open the drop down box and this is the default setting. So the subsystem runs when needed, okay, when needed, but apps start more slowly and they really do, it's very noticeable. Now that's all you need to do and then you can just close it. So we go back to the PowerShell which is in the ADB directory. We've got this address and this is the command to connect. But we need to connect to this address. So we'll just copy that. Right click on the terminal window. Okay, and immediately paste that in. Enter and it'll connect. Now I'm already connected, so all things being well, it will connect. Yep. Okay, now if you've done this for the first time, you will probably get a pop up, a white pop up box asking you to confirm that you want to connect to ADB. I'm not sure I've got a picture of it here. I don't want to make this video too long, so yeah, that's not the one. That's not the one either. Um, so yeah, and you have to do that. Right, so that's all up and running now. We're connected um, and we're ready to go and get some files into Android so we can start using them. Uh, this is just an easy way. This is kind of like just an easy way of doing it. So we head to Microsoft Store. Okay. And we're looking for an app called AOW. AOW tools actually. Um, you don't have to buy it. It's dead cheap. 169. It's an unlimited free trial. No time limit. You can buy this app to support me. So I'm going to buy, I haven't actually bought it myself yet, but um, I'm going to buy him a coffee anyway. Right, so let's install it. Right, so this is downloading. And this is going to appear here. Now, I'm not sure whether I mentioned this. I've done this so many times I've forgotten whether I actually mentioned that this is going to be turned on. Yes, I have. Okay, so that's all turned on. I don't take too much notice of this. It's all turned on. It's all up and running. It will find it, the instance immediately. Just go to your device. And that's it there. Um, it is connected, you see. We did connect it. And we just need to set it as, as default device. Okay, so it gives you some information. We're running Android 13 operating system. And um, so here we go, we have, we can run scripts, that's the file, the directory rather, very easy to get around inside. These are the apps that are already installed, as you can see, no apps installed. This is the one we're looking for at the moment, this is, the, and, and this is a drag and drop. So, so this is a great third party app. We'll go to downloads. I've got some couple of APKs here. Hopefully I've got the one I want. The file manager. Now I use file manager plus. I got these two from APK pure. And um, I'm also going to, uh, that's installed now. So that's the only option you get is to reinstall it and refresh it. You, you can't actually start that up here or oh, actually yeah you can you can start it up from here from the apps I've got to store one thing else as well uh, called MD it's a uh, dictionary reader doesn't come with any dictionaries in it so anyway there we go they're all installed so we got the apps the two two apps installed here, you can open them from here, uninstall them, etc, etc, open the settings. 
open this one first. So you know, I'll just allow it to get to the um, right. As you can see, there's absolutely no dictionaries in here whatsoever. Let's close this. And um, so, yeah, no dictionaries. So just open file manager. Because this is obviously this is a proper file manager, whereas um, AOW is not a file manager, and obviously Windows Subsystem for Android is 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 no no good for managing files like this. Uh, so this manages the files within the subsystem. You can't use this to so allow access to managed files. You can't use this to move files from the subsystem to the Windows environment. Okay, so this is a, a really nice interface, nice and clean, and it's uh, it's powerful enough for kind of intermediary use. It doesn't do incredible things, but its functionality is really pretty good. It just works really nicely, so you can add your accounts here and download um, from the sky. Yeah, so there you go. So we started that. There's nothing in them, nothing in MDIC. Just reduce that to the taskbar. Right, don't need that. So, right. What we're going to do now is basically transfer files. So, okay go into files and we'll transfer them into well we'll look for the mdict and we'll transfer some files into the mdict folder where the dictionaries should reside so and that's i know it's in this folder they should reside so we press go into there right so we need to here we need to just go into downloads where i know I have a zip file. That's the one we need. We need this folder, but we're not going to be able to upload it into AOW tools because nothing will happen because it's a folder. So you can imagine the scenarios, you've got say 100 dictionaries in 100 folders that you want to transfer from here to to the subsystem into this folder. Uh, you can't do it. Uh, the best way to do it, just make sure the files in, are in this folder that you need. Now there could be, you know, a few gigabytes of, of files in this folder, it could be anything, movies, whatever ebook dictionaries uh, so what i found if you've got say you've got a hundred of these folders the, your only alternative would be to create a hundred folders individually and name them okay where they are so i don't want to do that oh, you know i don't want to persecute myself so what i just do uh, get a folder and i just zip it and you can do this can zip multiple folders at the same time so that's the zip uh, file and, and that has actually now become transformed from a folder into a file and this will accept the the file so you can imagine you've got a hundred folders now we can zip the whole lot up with hundreds of megabytes in each folder and we can just drag those those individual folders that have been zipped, or we can just zip them all into one, one zip file. And there it is. Just close this down. It's done its job. It's received the files. It's uploaded the files. Open File Manager, which you'll find in your Start menu, as, as well as MDIC. Accounts. And um, so what's 
we're going to do, we're going to find the mdict folder where I put that zip file. Where I put that zip file, which is here. And we'll go to the docs folder and we will find the zip file here. Uh, so there could be one, there could be a hundred. So we'll just select the one, but we can select all the zip files. And just press extract. Here. No problem. Now, if there was a hundred, we would have to have created each individually a hundred folders and named them by going like that. Okay, this way, if you just zip them all, then the folders are just created instantaneously. Okay, so that's done. So, yeah, it, it's a really good file manager. So let's just quickly go into here, mdict, whereas previously, you remember, there were no dictionaries, and go into library, and it's there. Now, you can imagine having a 100 of those. These will be populated with a 100 dictionaries, if you can afford 100 dictionaries. But Word Web, Web is great. So there you go, Word Web 3. It's, it's great, it's uh, copyright free. Uh, thanks to Jack Chen for doing this for us because it's really nice. And uh, yeah, 366 days. Okay, so I think that's about it. Um, just wanted you to be aware of this, that app, AOW Tools and its potential. Okay, well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye for now.